the GameCube controller. Widely considered to be one of the greatest controllers of all time. And I definitely agree, but there is one little hiccup that I did not like in it, and I figured out a way how to actually get it to be more of my liking, and that is the Z button up here, in that I always found that the Z button was way, way too stiff, and I can actually modify that so it'll be less stiff, and you can actually get it to a stiffness of your liking to boot. What you'll need is a tri-wing screwdriver. You can get these a lot of places. I magnetize this one by rubbing a magnet across it, and that's pretty much it. There are eight screws on the back of a GameCube controller, a tri-wing screwdriver, <laughs> I mean screws, that you take the screwdriver with, and yeah, you, you know how to take out screws, right? Right? I'm gonna assume so. Next thing is take out the battery cover, take off the screw on the magnetized screwdriver, and carefully pop out the batteries. There we go. And now it should come apart pretty easily. You want to have all the circuitry and stuff on the bottom half if you can help it. So hold on to the wheel on the bottom if you're on a WaveBird controller. By the way, um, if you're using, I mean, if you're going to modify a regular GameCube controller, it's only got six screws and you don't have to worry about the wheel and whatnot. But anyway, just want to kind of pop this out. Oh, I already knocked the Z button out. That is okay. <laughs> I'm taking that part out anyway. So yeah, I wanted to have this half like this and you know, just set this aside. This has got like the shoulder button triggers and how they work and stuff like that if you want to check that out. But we really are not going to focus on this part. What we're focused on here is this Z button. See, there, slippery. <laughs> See this little metal piece on here? I should get into macro mode. Macro mode activated. All right, so here's the Z button. Flip that around and see this metal thing? Yeah, that. That is what causes all the tension in the button to be in the button tension. Well, it, this is completely unnecessary for the button's function. As a matter of fact, the controller itself has a micro switch there. See that? That is a micro switch on this, this corner here and it pops back just fine on its own. So I don't know why they decided to make it extra tensiony, springy here, but you can reduce this by pushing the spring in, and the further you push it in, the less tension the button will have. Now what I like to do <laughs> is take a screwdriver and actually push it as far in as I can so it's completely out of the way of the button. So, you know, the button's functionality like that and then you're good to go, and the micro switch itself will pop the button back out. Now, putting it back in, it's actually easier now that there's less spring tension on it. Just plop it in this little hole here, and that's about it. You just gotta make sure that this little corner is underneath the plastic outer shell, and then you just reverse your steps to get it back up and running and stuff like that. But let's say, for instance, things didn't go quite as planned, like maybe this wheel came off, or maybe this whole thing came out, and the buttons and stuff dumped out, and you're like, oh no! Well, don't panic at all, it's actually very easy to get this thing back together. Namely, because there's only one way to put it back together. <laughs> By, by its very design, like check this out, see here's the Y button here, if you know where the Y button goes, just whoop, goes right in place thusly, and you'll notice that all the buttons here, they have their own teeth design as well, so you cannot put them, <laughs> so you cannot put them back in like upside down or any sort of wrong direction or anything like that, so those just go in thusly, D-pad, plops in any which way. B button, see it's got, ah, I've got to stay in frame here. See it's got three little points. Match up those three little points. And yes, I'm doing this with the camera in my face, that's why I'm having so much difficulty. <laughs> I'm trying to look at two places at once, staying in frame and, well, you know, f focusing on the work. And that's the power slider switch. On this side it goes 
Uh huh. That's how it how it runs. I just have it in the off position so it matches up on the other side. Uh, I need another button here. It's a start button. Plops in there. I'm missing my X button somewhere around here. <laughs> When I dumped it out, it went on the floor, but that is okay. <laughs> this is all demonstration purposes. And now, take these little rubbery things. Again, they only go on one way, thusly. Some of them, they often tend to actually stick on the circuit board like this. Like this one here, you see. That's the start button. This is the uh, D-pad. And what they, what they really do here is put the D-pad on like so. The black thingies on there are the conductive rubber pads. Here is your start button. Just jiggle it in there if it doesn't quite. Yeah, and then flip this on top of it like so, and it should all just slide together nice and neatly. Oh geez, I'm missing the Z button now. It was under the bed, dang it. <laughs> so as I showed before, put the Z button in place like so, so that the little little notch here is inside. See that little hole there? That that's where it pivots off of, and then it just goes in there. You put the bottom tip underneath the shell like that, and listen. See, it works just fine, even without that metal thing. Better IMO. <laughs> Take the little wheel, and if you look on the side, there's a little flat spot meaning that it can only go on one way, voila, and you take the upper half, place it on there, make sure that the battery connector things go through that hole in the middle and it should slide together nicely, and there you go, you know, just put the screws in, battery cover, batteries of course, but <laughs> and voila, your controller is back together with a softer and easier to press Z button. So, woohoo! <laughs> Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.